what Good are evening we doing? Welcome to the Brian Crombie Radio Hour on Saga 960 AM News Talk Radio. Uh, I have the honor of every night at six o'clock, even with uh, our uh, self-isolation that uh, we're all undergoing, of bringing you interesting conversations with fascinating people. And tonight, uh, we've got the pleasure of interviewing Dr. Ava Anchuk. Uh, she is uh, a, a psychologist uh, and uh, uh, runs something called Core Center, which is a, a, a psychology um, um, what clinic here in uh, Mississauga. She also works with the Toronto um, Board of Education, uh, providing uh, psychology services for students. Um, and she runs something called Ideal Me, which is a seminar series that uh, um, provides counseling and uh, workshops to teenagers and to parents and how to become better versions of themselves. So Dr. Ava Anchek, uh, welcome to the Brian Crombie Hour. Uh, hello, Brian. Thank you so much for inviting me today. It feels much better knowing that I can connect with people online. Well, this, uh, is, uh, this is kind of fun, doing it from our own, uh, the safety of our own homes. Absolutely. We, we just follow the directions. And at the same time, we can have some fun and maybe learn something new and exchange some thoughts. So I think it's a great opportunity. Thank you very much for inviting me. Well, I wanted to, uh, number one, because I respect uh, your, uh, your, uh, your professional credentials and, uh, and all the work that you do in the community. But also, number two, because I think it's pretty topical. Um, I think there's probably a lot of people that are a little bit uh, upset, uh, worried, scared, um, trepidatious about uh, losing their job, about losing their health, about losing loved ones, about being off work, about being stuck at home, about being stuck with families, about a whole bunch of different things. Um, you know, the premier has now uh, declared a state of emergency, has uh, said that uh, all non-essential businesses have to close for the next two weeks. Um, we just don't know what's happening. So you've undoubtedly dealt with a lot of people in this regard. What, what are you telling people? Oh, well, you, you're absolutely right about it. Uh, these are very difficult, very uncertain times for a lot of us. Uh, I believe um, most of us um, don't know how to deal with this situation. This is very unique. Um, none of us experienced anything like this before. And it's uh, very difficult to give advice um, because, um, as, as you're saying, you know, this, these are very difficult times for all of us. Uh, however, there are certain things we can do uh, to calm down. You know, I, I witnessed in my profession a lot of crisis situations, and I um, observed both. Uh, responses, either denial or hysteria, panic, and from my experience, neither works very well in this kind of situation. Um, You've because, you dealt with situations where people have been hysterical and panicked? Absolutely, and, and, yeah. and again, th th this situation is very different because uh, it, it affects a lot of people at the same time. This is a global crisis. Um, however, when you, when you look at it from a little bit different perspective, we are dealing with difficult situations or with crisis situations on a daily basis. Some people die in car accidents, some people die out of heart attack, some people lose jobs. Um, there are things you can control and things you cannot control. So, of course, we are dealing with people who went through some kind of trauma, who are feeling suicidal, uh, who don't know what to do or how to cope when they're losing their jobs. So, the situation is unique because suddenly we are being told what to do. We are being told we are in a crisis uh, in a very dangerous situation and um, a lot of people are trying to either uh, reject this information and say, oh no, it's not going to happen to me, we'll be just fine. And there are people who are panicking and um, trying to, you know, we try to survive. Right. And uh, that's why, and that's why you, you see sometimes both extremes. And I believe that those people who are able to cope with this fear, to cope with these emotions are in the best possible situation is it is it better that we're doing this uh, uh being subjected to this all together rather than uh on our own because i undoubtedly some of the prior situations that you've been dealing with you mentioned car accidents losing a job that would be typically something that uh, you're just experiencing by yourself but now we're sort of all in this together is that better or worse 
Um, I don't know if any crisis situation uh, is um, um, that, that we are isolated in any crisis situation because no matter what happens to us, our families are um, affected, our co-workers, our, our friends. Um, but uh, this is a very unique situation and, you know, Aristotle said that humans are social animals. So it means that we want to be together, we want to fight find comfort um, in being with other people um, but at the same time uh, depending you, you see when I when I watch uh, information presented on let's say Facebook you will possibly see a lot of experts uh, in uh, coronavirus and and so on and uh, honestly I think that some of these information are maybe maybe dangerous uh, Dangerous information for, from the experts is dangerous. Why? No, 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 no. For from Facebook experts. That's oh, a little right. Different. No question. Well, <laughs> Dr. Anchak, we're just going to take a, a quick break for uh, traffic and messages and come back to you in just a minute. Okay, so stay with us and everyone else stay with us. We'll be back with Dr. Eva Anchak from the Core Center, a psychologist on the impacts of uh, the coronavirus on all of our mental health in just a minute. So stay with us. Well, welcome back to the Brian Crombie Radio Hour on Saga 960 AM News Talk Radio. We're here with Dr. Eva Enchak from the Core Center, a uh, psychologist. And we're talking about uh, the coronavirus and mental health and how to deal with it. And, uh, and uh, Dr. Enchak, you were just saying that uh, some of these sort of supposed experts on Facebook you think are, are concerning to people. Um, yes, for several reasons. First of all, they spread fear, uh, they intensify the fear. Um, and, and also what I fi find even more dangerous is um, that they are sometimes questioning what real experts are saying. You see, I'm, I would consider myself as an expert in you know, comp coping with stress, coping with difficult situations, uh, in building mental health capacities and so on, but I would never consider myself an expert in coronavirus, right. how to deal with epidemic. What I do, I simply follow what experts are telling me uh, because this is the right thing to do. Uh, I don't know better, and if somebody claims that they know better, I, I feel this is this is wrong and very irresponsible. Sure. So the experts are concerning. Okay, so I'll, I'll you know one expert that uh, that I um, I think is a real expert, but gave me a lot of concern today. Uh, this uh, top uh, uh, epid epidemiologist is that the right word uh, from um, um, from Ottawa, who said that there were 27 confirmed cases of the coronavirus in Ottawa. This was in an article in uh, the Ottawa Citizen uh, yesterday, uh, Sunday, and uh, and and yet uh, he suggested that there were four thousand people that actually had the coronavirus, and he had done that. Number one, based on the twenty-seven, was obviously people that had confirmed cases from a couple of days earlier, because that's how long it takes to get the test cases back. Um, but then also based on uh, on his uh, projections for the number of people that had come and had confirmed, but had no knowledge of who they received it from and so therefore it must have been received from someone that else was out and infecting other people and so he said the 27 is wrong it's actually 4,000 and the 4,000 will triple in a week so it'll be 12,000 by the end of the week and if that's right for Ottawa you can imagine what the numbers are for Canada for North America for the whole world you know um, you're right situation is I would consider it dangerous uh, however fear so the reaction to to this situation is our choice right um so i'm staying home and uh enjoying wine every night and uh and some uh relaxing time watching cnn and cbc on the on the tv actually that's not overly relaxing maybe i should turn it off but uh you know frankly a little bit of downtown at home is not that bad i agree with you um Actually, I am counting my blessings. I'm spending time with, uh, with my children. Uh, finally, I, I am able to find time for myself. I am able to spend time uh, doing things I really enjoy doing. And I think this is the right thing to do. Like, set up your, change the mindset. Um, when I wake up in the morning, first thing I do, I count my blessings. 
uh, instead of concentrating on something I cannot control, instead of concentrating on something I cannot change. So this uh, is a morning I, ritual that you've got that you actually seriously in the morning wake up and count your blessings? I, you know what, I developed many more uh, routines. I wouldn't say rituals, uh, but um, I think this is really important because um, wh where fear is coming from? Fear is coming from several different sources, but let's talk about a few of them. First of all, we need structure. Uh, we need structure because that way we can feel safe. Structure in uh, our lives. Excuse me? Structure in our lives. That's correct. And so far, people had this structure in their lives. They had to wake up in the morning, go to work, come back, uh, make a dinner, I don't know, watch TV or have a glass of wine. And suddenly, abruptly, it was taken away from them. Yep. So first thing uh, I decided to do, I, I developed a new structure for myself and my children. Um, I would call it a mental hygiene, really. Uh, so we, 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 try to, we try to stick to this structure. It makes our life a little bit more manageable and um, also make us feel a little bit more safe. So you've, even in this... Uh... Self-isolation, social uh, distancing, you've given your family some structure to live by. Oh, absolutely. I, I think this is very important because this is the only yeah. way to give them the, uh, even an illusion of control. This is what we really want. <laughs> Basically, we have, no control. Control. we have no control if we are going to get a virus or not, but we have control over how we handle the situation. Okay. Well, that's and you know what? Suggestion. What, else, what other suggestions have you got for us? So number one is, is is wake up uh, and uh, count your blessings, show some gratitude. Number two is uh, is create structure in your life, uh, even if it's at home with your family. What else? Um, I prepared a little PowerPoint uh, presentation. Would it be okay if I launch it? Fantastic, sure. Okay, so here we go. Please tell me if you can if you yep. can see it. That's great. All right. So here I listed some points um, uh, that I hope can help us uh, to deal with the difficult situation. Um, as we mentioned before, um, news are coming from many different sources. Some for sources are more reliable than others. Yeah. Uh, so I would recommend to choose two or three reliable sources of information that we uh, can obtain information from and do it not more than three or four times a day. If something really terrible is happening, I, I'm sure we'll find out about don't it. Don't spend all day on Facebook uh, with all these <laughs> supposed experts is what you're suggesting, obviously. That's right. Um, so I would limit time on, on social media because, again, I, um, I find very rarely information that are uplifting and uh, positive, a lot of information. And, and what is really scary, you can track. Uh, you can track the number of deaths, the number of people uh, infected and so on. And, and, this, uh, and this fear is growing out of proportion. Uh, as I mentioned before, uh, making a schedule and, and trying to stick to it is important. Uh, practicing gratitude, again, this is very important uh, because uh, we are shifting our mindset from what is uh, difficult, what is dangerous to something that uh, we can be grateful for. Right. As, Let me as go as back to number four, it, uh, just for a second, if I could, uh -huh. uh, making a schedule and sticking to it. Uh, someone on social media, and so therefore maybe not the expert I should be uh, uh, referring to and quoting right now, but actually I think had a great suggestion that is they get dressed for work every day. Um, and I, and me said, too. Uh, if, uh, <laughs> if you stay in your pajamas and in your sweats, then you're not going to be productive. Uh, you're going to think that it's a weekend. And so uh, even though they're not going to work, they're just going to their dining room table to do work. They get dressed for work. I, I do exactly the same thing. <laughs> I think it is very important to, uh, you know, um, get yourself ready. This is like not only um, this is kind of part of the mental hygiene, right. taking care of yourself and uh, being ready to do something, being productive. Um, otherwise, it will be very difficult for us to get back to routines and, um, and do something that can, uh, that can be productive in the future. Okay, so number five, practice gratitude, looking for the positive things. Uh, you talked about counting um, your blessings. 
do you do that uh, in a journal or do you pray or do you just uh, say what you're grateful for out loud or to yourself or what do you do? You know, uh, funny enough, I, I started writing a lot, uh, writing down my thoughts. And this is my way of coping with, with my um, fears, my um, worries. Mm -hmm. And it helps me also to structure uh, my thoughts. Um, or I simply sit down with, with my family and, and we talk about things that are good. Um, we, we try to exchange information of what good happens and um, what's, uh, what are our plans for, uh, for the next day, let's say. Excellent. What I do is I, uh, I actually pray. Um, I'm not an overly religious person, but I'm reasonably religious and spiritual. And, uh, and at the end of my prayer, I, I give thanks to the things that I'm thankful for. And I guess that's my regular thing, both in the morning and in the evening, about uh, expressing gratitude. And that's a beautiful and, and a very good thing to do. And some people also choose mindfulness or uh, guided meditation to uh, to calm down, to relax, and uh, and concentrate on things that are positive and important. Excellent. Okay, continue. Number six. Uh, number six. Try to focus on positive stories. Again, I know it's not very easy, but there are there. <laughs> Yeah. Positive stories are there, um, so it, it is good idea to focus on uh, on these stories. About on the, the positive news. stories from the news or in your own life or whatever. I, I think whatever brings a positive outcome and positive mindset. Right. Okay. Um, also related to the coronavirus, um, there are tons of positive stories, but uh, humans, people naturally uh, are drawn to the negative ones. Yeah. By the way, um, uh, the researchers say that uh, we have about 70,000 thoughts per day uh, and uh, more than 80 something percent of them are negative and repetitive. So in other words, we, we tend to ruminate. Thoughts a day. Yes. 80% of them are negative thoughts. Yeah, I think. Um, and, you know, I, I don't want to get into specifics of that, but when, when you look at, again, uh, humans, so we basically try to survive and some structures of our brain uh, are programmed to help us to survive. Right. Uh, that's why we create all these worst case scenarios because we want to be ready in case something bad would happen. Right. Um, well, in, <laughs> if we follow uh, the recommendations coming from the experts, wash our hands, stay at home, uh, and uh, practice so uh, social distancing or uh, isolation. Uh, I believe we are relatively safe. Uh, however, if we, if we concentrate on, on bad things that can happen to us, uh, then, then these ruminations can, ruminations, so repetitive negative thoughts can develop into depressive mood and it will be very, very difficult for us to get out of it. It's very right. draining. Okay. Uh, so it brings us to point number seven, focus on things that you can control. Right. As we mentioned before, there are things you cannot control and we cannot control if we will get the virus or not. We cannot control if we'll die out of it or not. Um, but we can control uh, certain behaviors that we, both you and I, I mentioned before. Right. Practicing healthy lifestyle, I, I, I think it is also <laughs> very important. I saw some, some funny pictures on, on Facebook, actually, you know, day they, one of quarantine and day 30 of quarantine we, when we are all obese and, yeah, <laughs> and lazy. Time to go to the refrigerator. Yeah, that's right, that's right. Why would you walk back to the refrigerator more often now when you're home than uh, when you're in the office and there's a refrigerator in the office too? You know what? I think that also um, uh, there are other uh, factors that play a role. For instance, uh, we are afraid that uh, supplies are limited. Right. And, you know, we, we usually lose weight or <laughs> we are in our best shape when we have unlimited uh, access to supplies. Really? In the situation when you think the access to supplies can be limited, that's, that's when you, you try to, you know, hoard things or, or you try to... Um, Overeat, get ready for hibernation. 
that's that's right that's right this is another survival mechanism and, and that's why possibly um you know people tend to open the fridge more often mm. than they do it um during the regular uh times uh exercising is extremely important not only because it will keep us in a good shape and healthy but but also it helps with anxiety and um, exercising physical activities increase uh, some hormones of happiness like serotonin endorphins and it makes us feel a little bit better and also this is a part of the structure routine and discipline yeah so so don't just because you can't go to the gym find another way to exercise and uh and stay healthy get out for a walk um don't overeat take your vitamin c etc <laughs> right that's right Okay. We're going to take uh, a break before you go on to this page and, uh, and uh, take a break for traffic and messages and stay, uh, stay with us, everyone. Come back uh, with more with Dr. Avancek. Stay with us. Well, welcome back to the Brian Crombie Radio Hour on Second and 60. We're chatting tonight with uh, Dr. Ava Ancek, who is a... Uh, psychologist and an expert on uh, psychology and uh, we've been uh, chatting uh, tonight about how to deal with fear and concern and uh, anxiety about the coronavirus which is something i think that's understandable if we're all suffering a little bit from and uh, dr anchek you were just going to uh, talk a little bit about dealing with fear uh that's right um as we mentioned before this is absolutely normal to to feel scared Mm -hmm. in a certain situation and uh, what is important is to accept this feeling embrace the feeling embrace it embrace the fear em embrace the fear this is this is a normal situation this is the normal way to feel in under the circumstances right okay. um if you if you try to deny it there then you're taking away from yourself options to cope with it right uh Again, uh, you can you can do a number of, of things um, uh, to help uh, in this difficult situation. Uh, for instance, uh, you can try to exercise. You can try to listen to music. You can try to use humor. You can try to connect with people online. Like again, it's a great pleasure to talk to you. <laughs> it feels less lonely. Yeah, it does. Uh, <laughs> Um, and the video is very helpful. Absolutely. Um, watching TV, doing things that you enjoy doing, reading books, maybe find a new hobby, maybe uh, learn something new. Uh, this maybe start practicing yoga, practicing mindfulness exercises. I think these are all things you can do to cope with uh, with these situations. Also. Uh, well, I think that, that, you know, that is a really good suggestion. I've heard so many people that say they're spending all their time just watching CBC or CNN and, uh -huh. uh, and are completely dwelling on it. And frankly, it's getting a little bit boring. Uh, the, some of the, the news reporting are just uh, repetitive over and over and over again. And so therefore, I think some of your suggestions are wonderful and, you know, might as well be productive in this time. How often in life do we have a week or two or three where we can do things that we want to do and you know maybe some of us will get laid off and maybe some of us will take pay cuts or vacation time or whatnot but but the reality is we're not going to be able to go out and and do stuff door to door and so let's use this time to help ourselves you know what is puzzling a little bit for me um a week or two weeks ago we, we were dealing with um situations when people didn't want to go out they were spending time on electronics computers uh cell phones and so on and suddenly everybody feels the need to go out and socialize i <laughs> well, maybe we reminded everyone about how 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 important socialization is and how how we do love going out and that uh being stuck uh inside on the video screen and uh on your uh, telephone isn't really all that satisfying. You're absolutely right about it. And I'm glad that people started noticing uh, what is really important in their lives. Uh, we have time to reflect, uh, not only in our families, I think we have time to reflect about the world, um, make some plans. And, uh, and this is another point, very important point that I would like to make. As you're saying, and rightly so, that a lot of people are going to lose their jobs and economy 
and politics and everything is going to be affected. I think this is a wonderful time to start planning for the future. We know more and less or less which direction the economy is going to go. I mean, um, when you're looking at um, some news, um, they're suggesting that uh, it will be uh, growth in uh, online uh, services. So for those of us who are able to do that, and I'm doing that at the moment, like I'm, I'm in the middle of uh, transitioning from, let's say, face-to-face -face meetings with clients, uh, to the online platform when you can have the counseling sessions through Zoom or uh, phone. Mm, I believe that maybe not all of us, but a lot of us will be able to provide these kind of services, uh, their, the services um, in, the same, in the same way. Right. So, planning yeah. for the future. Yeah. Sorry, I cut you off. Just start planning for the future. That's true. Really, that's true. Or even, you know, building a, um, a division board um, that you describe beautifully during one of the uh, ideal me sessions uh, would be a very good idea. So now's the time to take some time and try to figure out what you really want to achieve in life and put together a plan on how you're going to achieve it. I believe so. I, I think that this is much better idea than dwelling and uh, about the situation and, and thinking what can go wrong. Because there are many, many wonderful things that can happen in the future. Uh, life must go on. Um, this is not the end of the world, in my opinion. Uh, when we look at the history, this kind of uh, situations happened before. And somehow people survive. The um, human race continues on uh, and possibly you noted that after each recession or each terrible times, there was a growth. I had, uh, you know, a couple of other suggestions though, just from a practical standpoint, uh, one of my friends uh, said that they got a uh, dumpster delivered to their um, driveway and had the, her high school uh, sons start cleaning up the basement, something they had planned on doing, wanted to do, never got around to doing, and now was the chance to do it. Uh, I was out uh, doing work in the garden and uh, and lots of my neighbors were out looking in the garden. None of us went together and chatted, but we waved across the street to each other and kept on working in the garden. And uh, and then, you know, getting some of your financial stuff, uh, income taxes and other financial records that you keep on delaying and delaying and off-putting. Now's the time to maybe dive in and uh, do that. That said, I kind of like some of your ideas about picking up meditation or yoga or, uh, or a, a new hobby or something like that. I had another friend that uh, showed them uh, painting um, with their children. And one of the things that my family used to do when we went on family vacations was we used to take out a jigsaw puzzle and the whole family would uh, dive in together and uh, put a jigsaw puzzle. And it's one of those things that you never have time to do in uh, the day in and day out life of your busy life. But when you're on vacation or when you've got uh, some time in self-isolation, maybe that's the time to pull out a jigsaw puzzle and spend time as a family putting it all together. I think it's a great idea, Ryan. Okay, what else, what other suggestions have you got us for us on how to deal with fear? Um, you see, uh, there are some um, other suggestions. I don't know how much more time do we have, but uh, basically... You have uh, another slide for me. <laughs> basically, there are some, some other uh, strategies that we can use, like for instance, challenging our negative thoughts. Uh, so the first thing I do when I feel scared, and uh, again, it's okay to feel that way. We, we are human beings. We are dealing with a range of different emotions. So first thing I do, I ask myself, am I safe? And if the answer is yes, I'm safe, um, then I can start to reason with myself. So may I read some questions that I think that can be helpful when we are dealing with uh, let's say unhelpful or negative thoughts. Sure, please go ahead. All right, so just just few, some of them, and um, possibly some of them would require some explanation. But let me let me go through it. So uh, first of all, I, I just wanted to go back to something I, I mentioned before that our brain sometimes it's just trying to trick us because um, it's trying to keep us safe. Right. Uh, so we are dealing with a number of um, cognitive distortions, so thoughts that are not real, but they seem to be real. Cognitive and distortions. Cognitive distortions, meaning that uh, we, uh, we have some thoughts that seem to be real, 
but but again um, th there is a huge difference between reality and what we imagine however our brain cannot differentiate between okay. reality and what we imagine like whatever you create in your in your mind is real you have exactly the same physiological reactions to it right uh, so facts are, are things that we all agree on and we cannot change. So for instance, that the, the, the earth evolves around the sun, but I'm going to die or somebody is going to be sick. It's just a, it's just a thought. This is a rational belief. Okay. So things we can, we can say to ourselves, do, do you have proof or evidence to support your negative thoughts? Are you confusing a thought with a fact? Uh, do you have proof or evidence that does not support your negative thoughts? What is the worst thing that can happen if you think it's true? And, and this is a funny one because if you, if you really go far with it and, and you uh, make it huge and out of proportion, uh, very often uh, you, you, you will start laughing at your own thoughts because this is so unreasonable. Uh, but but to be fair, a lot of the thoughts that people are having right now is they're looking at the graphs and uh, and listening to uh, you know Tony Falke and uh, and other people about flattening the curve. And if we don't flatten the curve, then we're gonna run out of uh, healthcare uh, space. And if we get sick, there's gonna be no beds to take care of us. And yes, and then what? We're gonna be sick, and we're not gonna have anyone to take care of us. But also other statistics indicate that majority of people uh, recover from coronavirus. Right. Some of us don't even um, have these symptoms. Even though we may be carriers. That's right. The vast majority, 80% of us, are going to get a little bit sick, if at all, and we're going to be fine. And the so, people we're going to be worried about are the people that are elderly and or uh, have got uh, other health challenges. That's right. Um, and again, this is our responsibility uh, to keep them safe to the best of our ability. So if the government or experts are asking us to self-isolate, I, I think it's the right thing to do to, to avoid the situation uh, that you described a moment ago, right? But, but bottom line, what you're talking about is making sure that we separate out facts from fiction and stories and, 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 and concerns that maybe too big and and uh, and are not appropriate yes and i i believe that building this fear in our head and growing it out of proportion is like kind of self-bullying self -bullying. so self-bullying in a meaning that uh, we put That's these okay. negative thoughts um, in our heads and, and, and w I imagine that you're flying on a plane and, uh, and you are going for, the plane is going for some turbulences. Would you like the pilot to run and, and yell, my goodness, we are all going to die or would like him to say, hey guys, just buckle up and everything will be okay, right? So uh, basically I, I would prefer to uh, fly with the pilot number Two and first of all, I would like to. He doesn't tell you the truth about what's going to happen. Really, is that what you're saying? Uh, it's um. Is this? A, I would like him to tell me the truth, but in a in a um, the most positive way. He's not saying we are not going to die. He's saying, "Hey guys, be safe. Um, hold on, and I'm going. I'm going to try to go through it." No, oh, okay. So, so, and that's what I want you or me or anybody to say to ourselves when we are dealing with a difficult situation. Instead of being panicky and hysterical, oh my goodness, we are all going to die. Uh, I would like us to say, hey, this is a difficult situation. This is a dangerous situation. So, what can we do to make it easier? What can we do to make it better? Okay. Does it make that make sense? That's okay. okay. I'm not trying to deny. I'm not trying to ask people to think that uh, the situation doesn't exist. It does exist. And again, situation is dangerous, but how we handle the situation really makes a huge difference. But, you know, it, it is interesting because you've got these, and, and I've been watching uh, too much of the, the news programs on this uh, coronavirus, I have to admit, but uh, Governor Cuomo from New York, I think is handling it uh, far better than uh, President Trump. 
Um, and frankly, I think better than uh, Prime Minister Trudeau. Uh, and you know what he's doing is he is giving the facts. Um, and he's talking about what we can and should be doing to deal with the situation. And he's warning people about how bad it could be. But, but you've got someone that's dominating the details, knows his file, um, is coming like you uh, with uh, facts and a PowerPoint slide to uh, explain it, versus uh, President Trump, who is, uh, it appears to be putting a rosy picture on everything and uh, selling hope when maybe, frankly, just hope is not enough, and ad-libbing nonstop. Um, versus uh, Prime Minister Trudeau, who appears to be reading from a prepared script uh, the vast majority of the time, and you just don't know whether he's on top of all the facts or not. Now, part of it may be complicated by the fact that he is self-isolating from uh, his cabinet. But, you know, I just, uh, I, 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 and, and, you know, Tony Fauci, the, uh, the uh, infectious disease expert who's uh, on stage too often, uh, very often with, uh, not too often, not often enough, frankly, with President Trump, just a trustworthy kind of guy because he just states the facts. And I think you read people well when they're honest and stating the facts. And, and you know when uh, President Trump is bull blanking you, like you just, you can tell. You, you, you're right. Um, making it look sweet and beautiful doesn't, doesn't make sense. And sticking to facts and then, presenting people with their options is the key in here. Um, I believe that in these difficult times, leaders should be able, first of all, to stay calm and lead. Right. Lead by example, uh, make sure that they are not spreading panic, they are not um, presenting information in a way that uh, people will react with severe fear. Uh, but also sure facts, um, information <laughs> that, that are real. <laughs> We're going to take another break and come back with Dr. Eva Anchek of the Core Center, a psychologist with a little bit more information on how to deal with the coronavirus pandemic in just a minute. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Brian Crombie Radio Hour on Saga 960. We're chatting tonight with Dr. Eva Enchek, a psychologist with the Core Center here in Mississauga and a psychologist with the Toronto Board of Education and uh, the uh, founder of and instructor of uh, something called Ideal Me, which is a seminar for teenagers and parents on how to um, have how teenagers can become more better versions of themselves, more ideal, I guess, is the way to describe it. Um, Dr. Evanchak, we were talking in just before the break about negative thoughts, and you had some other suggestions on how to deal with negative thoughts. Uh, that's right. So we, we were talking a little bit about cognitive distortions and about you know how to um, how to question your negative thoughts in order to change your uh, mindset or in terms of changing the way you're thinking about the situation. So uh, I would like to go back to some of these questions, okay. uh, if it's okay with you, and um, maybe some people will find it helpful. Sure. Um, so, so some other um, uh, things that we can ask ourselves, uh, ourselves follow. Uh, are you using the words like always or never, all or nothing, everything or nothing, and everyone or no one? So, the idea is, are you jumping to a conclusion? And so sometimes people believe that others are thinking critically about them, let's say, or mm -hmm. they are thinking, oh, something, something bad will happen based on very limited amount of information. Uh, are you putting yourself down? So going back to our previous uh, conversation about how to handle the situation and what you can say to yourself or what, what you can say to yourself in order to uh, um, make you feel better. Uh, if you say to yourself, I'm not good enough or I'm not going to take this situation very easily and so on, this is again uh, like mental uh, bullying. So a lot of these things are are, are ways of putting yourself down and, and you're suggesting don't do that. And also, um, you know, I think one of the things that you've talked about before is that to separate out what happens versus what you sort of think about what happens and, uh, and, and don't overreact. Absolutely. So one, one of the other uh, questions I have here is, are you paying attention only to the negative side of things? Right. And I think that's what we are 
uh, very often doing in this uh, situation. Over, are you overestimating that uh, the chances that something terrible may happen? Uh, are you overestimating the importance of the situation? Are you expecting uh, yourself to be perfect? Are you worrying about uh, what other things? And so on and so forth. So these are, uh, oh, the other, the other good question I believe is what would the friend or trusted uh, person think about this situation? Right. Uh, if you look at the situation positively, how would, be, uh, how would this situation be different? So I think those are all very helpful things to make sure that you focus on, uh, on what actually has happened is happening and not on, on sort of your uh, interpretation of it and your fears about it. Now, Dr. Anchak, you said that you were developing an app to help people deal with uh, anxiety? Uh, that's right. This is, this is a fascinating project. It took us uh, several years, really. Uh, but this is the app called Talk to Alex uh, that is uh, going to help uh, young people, you I think not only, but the, the interface is uh, basically made for, uh, for children and, uh, and youth. Um, show them to us? Excuse me? Can you show Alex to us? Um, sure, I would love to help, uh, show you Alex. Um, first of all, I will need to uh, share the screen. So here is. So this is Dr. Eva Anchek's app on, uh, on how to deal with anxiety that she's uh, providing uh, to uh, teenagers on how to deal with anxiety. Uh, that's right. So these are slides that I wanted to, uh, these are some, some pictures I wanted to show just, just in case, you know, if you want to feel a little bit better for a second, it <laughs> and put a smile on my face. And, and, and here is Alex. Um, so this, Hi, this is, I am Alex, your robo friend. This is a little robo friend. Um, um, he's an animated uh, character, animated robot that is going to lead people through stressful situations. So in other words, if you are feeling stressed out, if you are feeling worried, you can talk to Alex and Alex will help you to calm down by using different strategies like uh, muscle stretching, uh, mindfulness, uh, going through uh, Muscle stretching, mindfulness, uh, and breathing exercises. Breathing exercises. These are these are strategies that can help um, calm the body down. When mm -hmm. when you are able to calm your body down, then you can start using uh, some kind of reasoning, um, including these questions that I uh, read a moment ago. Uh, to try to change the mindset. So that's the purpose of, uh, of the app, uh, to make it um, accessible uh, for everyone and, and the app will be free. Uh, so hopefully it will help also people to practice these exercises uh, as often as possible because either breathing, mindfulness or muscle stretching, um, these are things that definitely can help, but only if we practice over and over again. I, truly believe in disciplining our minds. Uh, by saying that, I, I, I mean that if we do things over and over again, these things become our habits. Right. So, so Dr. Anchak, if people want to contact you for any of your services uh, during this stressful time or any other time, how do they do that? Oh, that's a very good question, uh, Brian. And I should um, mention before that we also opened the crisis line, a helpline that uh, also offers free services. Wonderful. So if somebody's in distress, they can call 647-515-4357 uh, or um, contact us by email info at corecenter.ca. Info at corecenter.ca. Uh, correct. Uh, and um, we'll be happy uh, to help. Dr. Evanchek, thank you so much for joining us tonight on the Brian Crombie Radio Hour on Saga 960 and sharing with us some of your ideas on how to deal with uh, the coronavirus. We're going to take a last break and come back with some final comments. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Brian Crombie Radio Hour on Saga 960. We've been chatting uh, tonight with Dr. Eva Anchek from the Core Center. She's a psychologist, and the Core Center is a uh, center that provides psychological uh, help to, uh, to teenagers uh, primarily, but uh, to other people as well. 
And uh, I think she said you could get her at info at corecenter.ca. Uh, we've been talking about uh, the coronavirus and how to deal with self-isolation and fears about the coronavirus. And, and I think Dr. Anchek uh, had a bunch of really good suggestions. Um, you know, one of them uh, I thought uh, was make this a wonderful time rather than a scary time and, and use it productively. And she has a morning ritual of uh, expressing gratitude for the things she's thankful of. I do that as well. She talks about getting dressed and, uh, and having a schedule and adhering to that and staying healthy. And I like all those suggestions. And when dealing with negative thoughts, she talks about separating out the facts from the fiction. And I think that's key. The reality is that uh, 80% of us are uh, that if we do get it, um, the coronavirus, we're going we're to end up being healthy. And so therefore, what we got to really do is worry about grandma and grandpa and making sure that we don't uh, infect them. And, uh, and while that therefore is less scary for us, it also gives us responsibility. And I think that's important. And then I think the final thing that she suggested, which I really like, is how to deal with stress. And she talks about uh, taking a breath, uh, breathing exercises. My mom always used to tell me that, take a breath, Brian, take a breath, Brian. Um, stretching exercises, muscle stretching, and mindfulness. And I'm not sure exactly what she meant by mindfulness, but uh, for me, it's meditation, it's prayer, it's taking some quiet time, it's thinking about you know, what's important in life. And so, Dr. Ivanchek, thank you so much for joining us tonight. And, uh, and yes, we're all going to be a little bit nervous and all a little bit scared, and uh, this is a strange time, but it could also be a really valuable time for us to remember what, uh, what's important in life. And someone the other day told me something really, really really valuable at the dinner table. Uh, she said that uh, a house is made of four walls, but a home is what are the people inside of that house. And I think that's really key. And so let's make sure that we make our houses our homes. Good night. Thanks for joining us on the Brian Crombie Radio Hour. Stay with you.